So good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today, uh, whether you're joining us on Facebook or you're here on the conference uh, call with us. I know there's a number of media people on the conference call, so just in terms of housekeeping there, if you're on the conference call, would you just please mute your phone while we're speaking. Uh, you press star six to do that, and then star six to unmute it, and we'll give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you might have uh, after our presentation. Uh, I want to let you know that I'm joined here today by uh, several of our other folks. Kathy Forsley, who is our Director of Health and Human Services uh, here in Oakland County. Tom Hardesty, uh, you've met him before, Homeland Security Manager in Oakland County, and he oversees our Emergency Operations Center. And then finally, uh, Dave Woodward, who is the Chair of our Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Today, I would like to update you on really four areas. Number one, our Oakland County uh, case data. I want to lead you through some of the numbers of where we're at now and what we think that means. I want to talk, <clears throat> number two, a little bit about our expanded testing sites and the continued importance of testing here in Oakland County. Uh, I want to talk about a partnership with our local EMS and expanding our COVID-19 testing to independent living facilities. And then finally, I want to talk about some breaking news. Our Board of Commissioners last night approved an additional $12 million to, to further support our small businesses, and I think that's a critical step, and I'm joined here by uh, Commissioner Woodward to talk more about that. So first, let's start with uh, an update on our COVID numbers. Uh, as of last evening, Oakland County had 7,174 confirmed coronavirus cases in our county. Uh, unfortunately, these cases have resulted in 669 deaths across our county. Uh, 2,977 individuals, however, uh, have recovered from the illness, and that means that they have been uh, symptom-free for 30 days since the onset of their symptoms, so good news there. Uh, I'd like to show you a couple of charts this morning, and they're on the screen behind me. Uh, there we go, and let me just, I'm gonna grab, grab another microphone so I can tell you. So this is, this first chart is our average seven day chart of positive cases uh, in Oakland County. Uh, so it starts uh, from the beginning of the, the pandemic uh, through this week. Uh, and I think it gives you a pretty clear picture of where our positive cases have been trending. And, and for our media friends, we can make this uh, graph available to you. And then the next chart is similar, uh, and that is our seven-day rolling average of uh, coronavirus deaths in our county from the beginning of the pandemic through last night. Um, and so what I think these two, these two charts demonstrate is what we have meant all along by flattening the curve, right? You can see by this data that we do appear to be now uh, um, on the other end of the peak, which seems to have happened somewhere around the middle of April. And we've been in a, in a positive uh, direction since then. And this is, this is um, cautiously optimistic good news, right? This is, this is reason for cautious optimism, and that's how we're interpreting it here. And I wanted you to see those charts so that you, that you understand exactly what our public health folks are looking at and why uh, we can make some of the recommendations and, and, and suggestions that we will. Uh, but we also know that this happened because of the sacrifice uh, of so many of our residents and businesses and the measures that they have taken, that you all have taken to help flatten this curve. This could have been a very different chart. Um, and it, it is the efforts of everyone throughout this county and this state uh, to bring these numbers down. And I, I think that is um, a credit to all of our residents and businesses who have taken this uh, so seriously. Um, we also know, I don't have a chart for this, but I can tell you that our hospital system in Oakland County is stabilizing as well. Um, the number of patients that we're seeing in ICUs um, are, there's, you know, they're, they're plentiful, they're still significant, but they're stabilized. And that's a great news. Uh, it's a great news for, it's great news for uh, what we expected to see at the Suburban Showplace collection. And thank goodness we haven't had to fully um, um, uh, staff, staff that facility because of the chart and the efforts that we've made. 
Um, we know that continued efforts to, to do this, to flatten this curve, are still needed as much as ever if we're gonna continue to control the spread of the virus. So I wanna thank you for protecting yourself and your families and our county. So, but what these numbers do tell us is that we can begin to shift to a sort of a phased reopening of our economy. And we know that the steps that our residents and our businesses take as we begin to do this are gonna to continue to be critical. Um, until there's a vaccine, obviously, we're gonna be managing COVID-19 for a while in our county and in our country. Um, as individuals, of course, we do this by wearing the masks and washing our hands and isolating and avoiding crowded places, uh, cleaning the surfaces and taking all of the extra precautions that we've all heard uh, so much about. And especially, by the way, with our seniors and our vulnerable population, and we're gonna talk more specifically about those in, in just a bit. For our businesses, we know that employers need to establish screening pro protocols for their employees uh, and for their places of work so that they can keep their staff and their customers safe. And they need to refashion their work and workspaces to ensure social distancing, for instance. We know that those kinds of protocols and practices are going to be with us for a while. So let me talk about testing, which is a critical component of how we're addressing the COVID-19 pandemic in Oakland County. It remains essential. The supply chain of supply of, of, of PPE and supplies and testing equipment, it's improving, but I have to tell you that it remains a day-to-day -day effort to ensure that we have what we need uh, here in Oakland County. Uh, we're moving our drive-through testing uh, around the county now. If you recall, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had, we had uh, initiated our first drive-through testing here on our county campus in Pontiac. Starting today, we're also doing drive-through testing in Southfield. And by next week, we're going to be moving that drive-through testing around to Pontiac, Southfield, and Novi. Um, I want to review a little bit about uh, what we know about our overall testing results and the split between the positive and negative cases, so, because those are beginning to tell us a story uh, as well. So there's another chart here, and I'll move out of the way, uh, that illustrates that for the week of 418, uh, we tested 17,318 folks, and 37% of those were positive. Uh, now, if you, look, if you look ahead to this week, the week of 427, already, because of the additional testing and capacity that we have in the county, we've tested uh, almost 23,500 people, and we've begun to see the percentage of that total go down. We now know that it's at about 32%. So that's heading in the right direction. Uh, but we also know that the experts in, the, uh, in this field will tell us that it's better to be around 10% which would mean that you're really testing the number of people uh, that you need to so that you know exactly where the spread is and how to begin to help uh, further isolate it. So we're, we're trending in the right direction in terms of testing, but we want that number 32 to be more closer to 10. Uh, and our, our focus is gonna be uh, uh, increasingly on doing that. So, we need, so in order to do that, of course, we need to expand our testing. Uh, so I want to take this opportunity, as I often do, to encourage our residents to get tested at one of our drive-through facilities or where, uh, whatever else is available to them. There's other locations uh, on the State of Michigan website, so check those out as well. But if you want to get tested through Oakland County, it's very simple to do. You just make a reservation by calling our Nurse On Call program at 800-848-5533. I'm gonna repeat that, 800-848-5533. Uh, and they can schedule you an appointment at any of those three locations. And if you are an essential worker, by the way, uh, you can make those reservations even if you're asymptomatic and we encourage you to do so. Uh, so testing is also really critical in our senior living facilities. We know that this is the most vulnerable of all the vulnerable populations, this is certainly uh, one of the, the most vulnerable, and it has been a top priority of ours from the beginning of this pandemic. And Kathy is here because she's gonna talk a little bit more about uh, what we're doing in senior living facilities and, and, and how we're addressing uh, uh, 
our approach to the different needs in the different kinds of facilities. But I want to highlight today a partnership that we have formed with our local EMS workers to test every resident and staff member in our priority facilities. This is critically important. Uh, and these folks are already trained medical professionals. And so uh, this partnership, I think, is going to go a long way to help us address our testing needs in these uh, senior living facilities, so we'll talk about that. Today, for instance, this partnership has already is already um, happening today in West Bloomfield. Uh, they're gonna be in Southfield later today, and tomorrow we'll be in Birmingham, and we're gonna do this throughout the county. We've already begun doing this, in, but now in partnership with our local EMS partners, uh, and this effort is gonna continue next week and in the weeks ahead. So let me explain just a little bit about what I mean by senior living facilities, because there's, there's certain categories within that. So we, we consider that to mean independent living facilities. It could be a skilled care or nursing home. Uh, it could be a rehabilitation center. It could be an assisted living center, or it could be a memory care facility. And so those are broadly how we categorize these facilities, and we're addressing the needs differently uh, based on the needs of those facilities. Uh, you know, our health division has already been meeting uh, regularly uh, with these facilities throughout this pandemic. Uh, and by the way, uh, I would be uh, negligent to uh, not mention that Tom Hardesty from our EOC has been supplying them with PPE. We've, we've supplied PPP and other supplies to 175 of these uh, facilities, ranging from the full care facilities to senior apartments. We, this has been a focus and will continue to be an increasing focus of ours uh, we've also organized calls on a regular basis with all of the senior living facilities in Oakland County. We did that in March. We did it again in early April. And beginning this week, we're doing it weekly with them to make sure they understand the protocols and the resources available to them to help keep their residents safe. So at this point, I would like to uh, call up Kathy Forsley, again, our Director of Health and Human Services, to talk just a little bit more in detail about um, our strategy around senior living facilities. Okay. Good morning. I would also like to tell you that the health division has a staff task force that contacts each facility twice a week to gather information, resource requests, and reinforce healthcare messaging. As of yesterday, we know that we have 137 senior living facilities that have been impacted by COVID-19. And across these facilities, there's been 1,377 reported cases among those residents. 373 additional cases among staff members, and unfortunately, 346 have resulted in a fatality. These are indeed sobering numbers. There is no doubt that even while implementing best practices to spread uh, uh, this communicable disease, the pandemic has hit these facilities very hard. The level of medical personnel and infection control plans does vary amongst the different types of facilities that we have. So that is why we have made our focus for comprehensive testing efforts on independent living facilities first. Uh, these are senior communities with apartment style living. And unlike other facilities such as assist, um, skilled Still skilled care or nursing homes, they don't have the same capabilities in terms of medical staffing or capabilities to conduct large scale testing on site. So they will be our priority to assist and help them get this testing uh, underway. So to address this gap, we have, as uh, Executive Coulter has said, we formed a partnership. Um, it began with the Medical Control Authority who, and also our local paramedics and fire departments and EMS providers to assist with this testing. Oakland County Health Division Medical Director, Dr. Russell Faust is training individuals every day at local fire departments and EMS employees so that they can join us in our efforts to swab residents at senior independent living facilities to test them for coronavirus. Residents who test positive will be isolated and receive medical care, and the Health Division will conduct contact tracing on anyone who tests positive for COVID-19 
to determine their close contacts. The close contacts will then be instructed to self-isolate and monitor symptoms for 14 days. We are scheduling more senior independent facilities next week and the week after, so into the foreseeable future, we will be testing every week in the communities. It should be noted that in some cases, a facility may be able to uh, connect directly with a lab that is billing and for the centers of Medicaid and Medicare services and conduct their own testing on site. And this would apply most definitely to skilled care and nursing facilities, rehab facilities, and perhaps others. The state is also in touch with these facilities and we are facilitating that option as well. So the bottom line for this testing is so important for our senior care and living facilities, it's very essential to identify the presence of asymptomatic residents and staff that may be unknowingly driving a risk of exposure within their facilities. So we're very hopeful that this testing will be hugely impactful uh, to those, those facilities. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Executive Colton. So uh, thank you, Kathy, um, really appreciate that. And she'll be available for any questions you might have about that initiative as well. Um, and as we more move forward with testing each day, we're gonna continue to look for practices uh, that may require broader actions. We're having conversations with the facilities every day. And some of the questions we're asking are, are the, are you, are the facilities communicating well enough with their residents and the resident advocates or family members? That's a critical component of what needs to happen. Uh, are they testing all staff and requiring third-party vendors to provide notification about positive tests? Uh, and our health officer is gonna continue to monitor these efforts and where additional health orders may be required, uh, we're prepared to do that. But we have a great partnership with these facilities and we believe that that collaboration has proved very uh, beneficial so far, and, uh, and we expect that cooperation and collaboration to continue. We're going to continue to aggressively reach out to our senior population because we know how vulnerable they are, uh, and we got, we're gonna make sure that they have the resources that they need and the testing that they need uh, to make sure that we can contain this virus in that population as well. So now let me shift to uh, the final point that I wanted to talk about today, which is our efforts to help our small businesses. You know, just as our health has been affected, so has our economy. And uh, they are both uh, critically important and we have to get them both right. Uh, neither one or the other can take precedent over the other. Uh, and this is, you know, when I, when I look around and I, I read the papers and I see some of the things that are going on, this is, this is a nuance or a balance that's, that's not always easy to achieve in, in, our, in, our, in our collective politics, frankly. But it, it's absolutely critical that we keep our eye on both of these things. And so uh, we've already started to see the effect, the economic effect on our state. Uh, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, the, 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 the GDP in, in the United States shrunk by almost 5% in the first quarter, and that's gonna get worse. Uh, I heard the numbers this morning that in Michigan, there's 1.26 million Michigan residents who have filed for unemployment insurance since the beginning of this pandemic. That's more people than live in Oakland County. I mean, it just gives you the magnitude of the economic import, impact, and that is not lost on any of us. And we know that critical to that is our small businesses. 93% of the businesses in Oakland County are small businesses, under 50 employees. So I'm really proud that at the end of March, my administration, working uh, collaboratively and hand in hand with our Board of Commissioners, uh, announced a $3 million uh, small business stabilization fund uh, with 1.5 million, uh, 1.15 million of which came from the MEDC, the state of Michigan, and I appreciate their support as well. Uh, so that we could give out grants to our small businesses throughout the county. Uh, 2.3 million has now gone out the door directly to the small businesses that applied, uh, and, then, and that went out earlier this week uh, because we knew it was important to get the, that money in their hands quickly. 
The other $700,000, by the way, was set aside to help our small uh, manufacturing companies shift their production from what they were making to making still needed and critical PPEs. And we've begun to give those grants out as well. Um, we have, we have a, a company in Pontiac that's making medical grade masks now, and we have a, a company in the north end of the county that is making face shields for our, for our first responder healthcare um, folks. And so critical need there and uh, more money available to help those companies do that. So 800 uh, businesses across Oakland County received these grants and, and, and what we know is that it was just a critical infusion of, of quick money to help pay the rent or the mortgage, keep the lights on, pay an employee or two to, 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 to stick around, uh, things that are just in the ordinary course of business but without could have put them under. And, and we, we need to do what we can to support this sector, this huge and important sector of our economy. Now, the maximum award allowed was $10,000, uh, and some folks got that. The average grant uh, was anywhere from between $2,500 and $5,400, depending on the location and, and the request. Uh, and we, we felt pretty good about that. That was, I think, may have been the largest uh, program of its kind in the state at the time and, and, and we felt really good about getting how quickly we were able to do that, how we were able to, by the way, identify those companies and I want to talk about that for a little bit because it wasn't us sitting here in Pontiac figuring out who should get the money, but we created 10 zones across Oakland County. We wanted to get resident, we wanted to get community input from the local chambers, the local DDAs, the local elected officials, the folks who are on the ground in their communities. And so we formed 10 uh, zones across Oakland County, I'm sorry, 12 zones across Oakland County and 12 boards who helped make these decisions. It, 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 wasn't, uh, it wasn't me. So, um, and, and they had to do that based on the strict guidelines of the MEDC money and the, and the parameters of the, of the thing, but we kept it as loose as possible so that they could spend it on as many things as possible. So that was the good news. Uh, but the disheartening news is that we had more than 7,300 businesses apply. And like I said, we gave out 800 grants, 7,300 businesses apply. That represents 17% of the total amount of businesses in Oakland County. A huge need. The total request from them, $80 million. So we felt good about the $3 million. Like I said, I think we leaned in and led the way in the state on that. But we know that there's so much more need. And, and that's not to say that there aren't other resources out there for those businesses, but in some cases they didn't qualify. In some cases, like with the PPP, uh, the monies did not get where a lot of us had hoped that, that, that they would go. Um, and some of it is just taking longer than they expected. And some of these businesses literally need a lifeline now. So it was clear to us that we needed to do more. So that's why I'm really pleased to announce that my administration, again, working with the Board of Commissioners, uh, and they met last night, so this is breaking news, the Board of Commissioners met last night and unanimously approved the support uh, of an additional $12 million in available grants to these businesses, to the businesses who applied in the first round where there's still an incredible need and we weren't able to supply those needs. So we're gonna go back at it. We're gonna do a round two with an additional $12 million. This is unprecedented, but um, um, we're gonna continue to use the same system. We're gonna use these 12 district panels that we've empowered to make these decisions uh, and we're gonna do it quickly. We're gonna get this money out the door as quickly as we can because we know the urgency uh, that is there. And I will just tell you that this really would not have been possible without the leadership and support of my friend, uh, the chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Dave Woodward. And so I wanted to give him an opportunity to speak a little bit more about the specifics of the program and the importance of our small businesses in Oakland County. Dave? Uh, thank you, uh, Executive Coulter. Um, and it, I think it really does speak to the monumental uh, impact that we're able to uh, be able to deliver so quickly. Uh, when additional dollars became uh, available on a matter of days, the board uh, unanimously moved to support this program that you proposed 
a month ago. And I think it's important to put it to scale that at, at every day, every step is being taken because we know how much small businesses on the front line are struggling. We know um, how mom and pop operators are literally fighting for their survival. And we also know there's a vigilance and a determination to, to get through this. And as, a, a, as we keep saying that to get through this together, it takes one step at a time. And the $3 million seating of the Oakland County Small Business Stabilization Fund was a bold step, the largest anywhere in the entire state. We're going to pour a lot of gas into that tank to fuel it. And the $12 million, as, as you mentioned, is gonna be able to make that happen. Um, I would like to say a lot of, I get a lot of calls from local small businesses um, willing to do whatever it takes to stand now and shoulder to shoulder with you, Executive Coulter, and the, the, the health team and all of the residents of Oakland County to try to figure out how to get through this, how to get the supplies to protect the public, um, how are they going to be able to open when the economy can open. Um, these resources um, help bridge us to that point. And um, I want to commend you for envisioning this, this uh, incredible plan. Um, and also compliment the entire economic development team. Uh, the, the beauty about this program, which I think is uh, having been in state government and county government for many years, to see the democratization of decision making, uh, to uh, decentralize it so that front, uh, folks on the front line, those, in, those economic development experts, the chamber experts, the DDA leaders, and, and other local leadership help really make certain that this support aligns with local economic development strategy as well as really pushing the envelope and trying to make as much impact. Um, we know that we're not gonna solve the entire economic uh, uh, solution exclusively by this, but this bridges the gap so that we can open up again and um, really power this economy and, and move Oakland County back to our position of driving the economy in Michigan and leading the prosperity for working families all across this great state. So uh, thank you very much. We're happy to be able to do that and we stand ready to continue to help support these initiatives and all the incredible leadership we've taken. Uh, Dave makes a great point. You know, our businesses have have uh, have really been uh, impacted by this pandemic in in just unprecedented ways. And yet, despite that, they have stepped up. They've offered the help. Uh, they they followed the orders. Uh, they want to do the right thing. They want to go above and beyond the right thing. And I can't thank our business community in Oakland County enough for all of that they've done. So with that, I would just say, you know. Um, the outlook is improving. That the, the church earlier were encouraging um, the having the additional resources from our board, and I want to thank Dave and the entire board of commissioners for their support last night. Uh, is encouraging, uh, but we have to we have to stay vigilant. Uh, this pandemic and this crisis is not over, uh, and what we do today and going forwards is going to go a long way to, to how well we address. Uh, the rest of the pandemic uh, in, in our state. So with that, I would invite questions, and there are some uh, journalists who have, have called in and, and given us their information, and so I think Ken Rogalski from WJR is the first one if you want to do star six. Ken, if you're still there uh, and have questions. Ken, are you there? All right, maybe not. We'll come back to you if you are. Uh, Gina Kaufman from the Detroit Free Press, are you there? If so, just star six. Yep, can you hear me? I can, thanks. Oh, great. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, this is a question for Ms. Forsley. Uh, just a little clarification on the testing at independent living facilities. Um, I, I guess I'm wondering, can you explain how, how the process is going to work? So if you're starting with independent living, will eventually that expand out to uh, nursing home, skilled living, assisted living, or is it pretty much going to stay isolated to just independent living? We're really focused on independent living right now. Of course, if others need assistance, we're there to help them and help connect them to resources they may need. Uh, but skilled care, uh, other facilities that have more medical care staff on site have more capability to do this testing and in fact want to do this testing. Many have already accomplished that. So we're on calls with them regularly. Um, every Friday now we're having calls and we're learning as we go what the needs are, but they have really expressed that in th that those areas, they're pretty much covered. And if they're not, they're telling us about it and we're working with the state to see what we can get to them. Okay, 
Wait, so just to clarify, so nursing homes, because I know, for example, the city of Detroit has done testing in nursing homes specifically. I just want to be clear, that's not quite what you guys are doing. It's independent living, more like apartment-style living, like you said. Right. In fact, we have initially, before we realized there were um, already calls from the state to assisted living facilities, we were calling them to see if they needed that assistance. And by and large, they seemed to feel that they were covered, that they could either get it done independently or through the state resources, or maybe their physician on duty was ordering the testing, but they're really in a different place than ind independent living facilities are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Larry from WDIB, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Larry. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much. Just a quick question for you. Um, can you elaborate more on your death rate? I know it has been in your last recent days about 9%. Um, do you think it's behind the relatively high death rate in the Pendleton County? So I understand the question. What do, you, what do we think is behind the relatively high death rate in Oakland County? Yes. Compared to, um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to throw this to Kathy, but I, I you know, uh, it, it's not my impression that our, our death rate versus positive rates are particularly out of order from other counties and states that we've seen. So I just want to get a, I, I just want to understand your question. Yes, I was. Uh, so I guess in the most recent days, like it has been about nine percent. Um, so we were just trying to, I'm trying to figure out what do you think is behind the, um, the high death rate in Oakland Oakland County. And then are you also, are you prioritizing tests for sickest, sickest patients? Uh, well, I'll take the second part of that, which is we're prioritizing tests only because there aren't enough tests available, but we're, we're prioritizing tests, uh, for people who are symptomatic, uh, or uh, essential first uh, responders, essential workers, uh, can be asymptomatic. Uh, so that's how we're prioritizing the tests now and prioritizing, by the way, senior living facilities. So what we're talking about today, that becomes uh, a new, um, that becomes a new priority, not, not a new, I shouldn't say a new priority for us, but that, that's a priority for us and has been in Oakland County as well. But make no mistake, we need more testing. We need more testing in our general population. We need more testing so that we can get to the point where we're testing asymptomatic people in the general population. Uh, we need more testing in all of our facilities, our senior apartments, uh, I mean, across the board. That's how we're gonna get that number down to 10% positive uh, tests. Uh, so that continues to be the, the general theme that, that, and, and the orders that we're working on. Kathy, I don't know if you have any other comments around the, the death rate per se. Yeah, just yeah. So our testing has been really confined early on to those that were most sick um, as they entered hospitals. Now it's opening up. We can get to a bigger population of people, um, but we're still, the tests are still confined to uh, those that are ill, uh, we have symptoms, Unless you're an essential worker, then you don't have to have symptoms. So then we're trying to get at the asymptomatic uh, population that might exist out there. And um, also, again, the senior population, the senior uh, facilities are a high priority. So we're testing everyone, symptom or not, to also get at the asymptomatic numbers. As far as the death rate, um, that's something that I don't have all the numbers in front of me. I would like to explore that further. We can have an additional conversation about that. But again, as we test more, all of these rates will come down. Well, well Kathy, just real quick, why do you believe that the, the death rates are so high in Oakland County? Not, not, for, not asking for a precise number, but why do you believe it's so high? I would have to compare it to others to be able to answer that question. I just don't have that information in front of me. Thank you. 
I, I mean, if I could just follow up in, in exploring your question. I mean, we have high positive rates as well. Is it is it a related question? Like, why does Oakville County have high positive and death rates? Or is there something about death rates in particular that uh, um, that is the, the essence of your question? If I could, just to clarify. Yeah, so if, you could, if you could elaborate on both the positive rates and death rates, that would be great. Uh, so we know that Metro Detroit, Southeast Michigan is the epicent is one of the epicenters in the country. Uh, I think that there'll be a lot of folks studying uh, how that happened and why. We know that it's uh, that it's the density of this area that, that uh, certainly contributes to that. Um, but I, I, I think that uh, public health professionals will probably be studying for a long time how uh, specific regions, uh, were more heavily impacted and why some were not. Um, so there is, I don't think there's a complete picture yet of, of why. You know, initially uh, we thought that maybe there was a lot more international travel going on among our residents. But what we've seen is that now we have comparable numbers to Macomb County and Wayne County. And, and, um, and, and so it, it, it's, you know, there's going to there's gonna be more studying in the days ahead of, of, of what has really driven that. Thank you. All right, are there any other uh, media friends on the line that would like to ask a question at this point? Hey, this is John Hewitt from WWJ. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can, John. How are you? Well, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Um, I have two questions, and, and Kathy, what I'm curious about, just to, to go a little bit further detail in the numbers, and maybe I'll give you a couple, three questions here. I don't know if you're able, probably easier to take a couple quick notes of what I'm asking and then just fire back. When you mentioned 137 senior living facilities in the county, um, I'm wondering how many residents net that would mean in total if we were to test them all. That's one question. The second is when we talk 1,377 reported cases, out of how many tested is my question. Detroit saw a roughly one in four in their nursing homes test positive. Then the other question is on the fatalities, the 346 number that you quoted, was that all residents or did that include any staff? And lastly, uh, in general, maybe back to you, Dave, on the question, has it been lack of equipment, lack of knowledge, lack of available testing that has led to so many fatalities? And that's kind of what Detroit shared, that people didn't know necessarily, didn't have access to medical equipment or testing uh, to get going on it quicker. So I know I've thrown a lot at you, but I'm trying to get a little bit better handle on the numbers when we say 1,300 cases out of how many to begin with tested, if you will. Yeah, gotcha. So I'll answer your last question and then I'll, I'll, I'll let Kathy think through your first three. But the last one is, as I said before, yeah, the availability of testing, supplies, uh, laboratory capacity, literally swabs, testing kits, has been, inad has been inadequate. Uh, if we would do more testing today if we had uh, the capacity to do more. Uh, and so that continues to be both a frustration and I think an opportunity for us moving forward as we, as we again, think about slowly phasing open the, the economy. Uh, that's gonna have to be a critical component of it. And, and we're getting better at it. Uh, we are getting more supplies and, and, and testing kits and swabs and, and lab capacity and the like. It is increasing. Uh, but frankly, we could use a lot more. Kathy, you want to? Okay, well, I took notes, but I'm not sure. <laughs> we may have to repeat those questions. But So in terms of the 137 impacted facilities, can you repeat what your question was about that? Do you have an idea of how many residents would be in all of those facilities, meaning if we were to test every one in the end game, how many people are you talking about? All I can tell you is that um, if we look at all of our facilities, of which we believe there are 200 plus or minus facilities in these categories, that would be, we've looked at numbers, that, but it included staffing, that we were figuring around 15,000 um, for all of those individuals. So that would be residents and staff across all of that. Of these 137, I don't have that information in front of me. Fair enough. Um, out of the 1,377 reported cases, do you know how many people were tested, meaning uh, 1,377 positive out of how many? 
And that's another question I can't answer because we don't know uh, the full scope of the testing that has taken place in a, a number of these facilities. I don't know if it's across the board testing or if they tested those that had symptoms only. That's a very good question and one that we are in the process of trying to um, tally. Appreciating what you were saying, I was just trying to drive it whether you're seeing a one in four ratio like Detroit yeah. is, but I, I understand your answer. Lastly, 346 fatalities, were those all uh, residents or were any staff involved in that count? That includes staff as well. You don't have a breakdown by chance of how many, or I, I know I'm asking some minutiae here, but I didn't know if you had it broken down. I'm very sorry, I don't have an exact number, but I believe in terms of staffing, it's a very, very low number. Good, I appreciate your time. Dave, I have one last question, please, and thank you for the opportunity. When you talk about the um, mobile testing, <clears throat> I'm just trying to get clear. Southfield, Novi, other locations, are you still going to remain on the grounds in Pontiac and then these are additional or is it the one test group that is going to be on the move? For right now it's going to be on the move. We're going to move around. So we'll be in Pontiac for two days, we'll be in Southfield for two days, and we'll be in Novi for an additional day. So uh, we're still at the, at, the, at the five days capacity, although I should mention that we are increasing the amount of people that we're able to test on a daily basis. So testing is increasing. Uh, but that, that, is a, that is a moving around uh, operation uh, uh, until we can increase the, the, uh, our ability to test more. Got it. And it's two days next week uh, in South, at Pontiac 2 in Southfield and then Novi next week, all, all five days? That's correct. As far as those, got it. I thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, this is Larry Sproul with MEDIB again. Um, yeah. my, my first question is there, um, are there plans to, and I apologize if you already uh, explained this, are there plans to expand that testing to people with mild or no symptoms? Uh, there's a hope to, uh, we need to. Uh, the question was, is there a plan to expand testing to people with mild or no symptoms? Well, let me say, mild symptoms are currently covered. If you have mild symptoms, you call our nurse on call, talk through what those symptoms are, and they will more than likely make an appointment for you. We're trying to get to as many people as possible. All, uh, if you have no symptoms and you're an essential worker, you can also uh, get a reservation for an appointment. But ultimately, we do want to get to a place where everyone, asymptomatic or not, uh, can get tested. But right now, mild symptoms would be covered and you just need to call our nurse on call. Thank you, and my second question would be, um, is there a plan to use testing to help people get back to work moving forward? Yes. Uh, and, and we don't, I, you know, I, we didn't get into, you know, we're, we're currently working through both internally here at Oakland County, how we bring our employees back, and also guidelines uh, for our businesses as they start to move um, more folks back. But it is going to be critical uh, that uh, frontline employees who interact with the public get tested. Uh, and so that will need to be part of the reopening uh, operations that we do. It certainly will be here in Oakland County. Uh, we'll have more to say about that in the next few days. We're working through the details of what that looks like. But at the very least, it should be what essential businesses in Oakland County are doing now, which is daily m health screens uh, with a series of health questions and it, uh, where possible uh, a thermometer, uh, a touchless thermometer, uh, and it should be the, the space distancing requirements that we've already initiated. So, uh, but, uh, so, yeah. My last question, thank you so much. Um, how often would people need to be retested for this to be an effective strategy? You know, I mean, testing is a point in time, right? And we know that, at least until we get to the antibody testing and, and we are nowhere near uh, the, the place where we need to be to do that. So. Um, I think we're going to have to work through what that looks like uh, in, in, all, in all frankness. It, it, it's, a, it's only a test in time, but it's an important test in time. And so 
Uh, I, I don't have a, a more specific answer uh, for you than that. It may require, it may depend on the type of business and the type of work that folks are doing. Uh, you know, it's not a one size fits all thing and we're not gonna approach it that way. Uh, but, but regular testing will be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Confident it's a free press again. Yeah. Um, uh, Ms. Forza, I just wanted to follow up on some of the, the testing at the senior facility. Um, you mentioned uh, in an earlier response that you don't, the county doesn't know the full scope of testing at the facilities like nursing homes and uh, skilled uh, nursing facilities. How is the county ensuring that the facilities that won't be tested under the county's effort here are actually conducting testing of their residents? And that's what we're working with, trying to find out their status. We're working with them on these weekly calls that our task force is making, finding out what kind of testing they're doing and how comprehensive is it. And then we're reinforcing that in our weekly calls with them. And then, you know, over the next few weeks, uh, I think we'll have a pretty good handle on what that looks like and what they may be in the process of trying to achieve. Maybe they're having difficulty getting testing supplies and that's where we're gonna come in to really assist them the best way we can to try to secure those testing supplies for them if they're not able to do that on their own. We're not just leaving them out there on their own to try to figure it out. We wanna work alongside them and provide everything we can to assist them. Okay, just a quick follow-up. I mean, given, you know, that this is a vulnerable population, um, why not just expand testing in Oakland County to include all of the senior facilities? We would love to do that if there was enough testing coming in. They're pulling in testing through their streams, um, supply streams, and we're pulling others in. We know that independent living just does not have any of those opportunities um, that skilled care would have. So they have a lot of options that independence simply doesn't. So yes, we can expand to them. If they need help with testing, we certainly can partner with the paramedics in their area and try to get that assistance in there if they need it. But I've been told um, a number of times with the facilities I've spoken to that that is absolutely not necessary, and that they're already testing. And so we just need to find out how comprehensive that testing is. It's very important that not just the residents are tested, that all of the staff is as well to identify asymptomatic cases. So we will stay on this and work with every single facility, even though we're currently present in independent living facilities, many efforts are going on behind the scenes to communicate with all facilities. And so if I could just add on to that, it, you know, uh, the nursing homes have been a, a, a priority and a, and a concern of ours from the very beginning of this pandemic, and we are in regular contact, and they simply have more capacity because of the medical care that they have on staff to manage some of this on their own, and to this point, we feel comfortable that they are doing uh, uh, an adequate job of managing that. These independent living facilities, however, don't have on-staff medical support. And that's why when we say we've made them a priority, uh, all of these categories are priorities to us because they all house vulnerable populations. But at this moment in time, those facilities that don't have their own medical care on-site and on-staff uh, uh, require an additional level of, of priority uh, that, we're, that we're talking about now in partnership now with our, our EMS partners uh, in the community. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? All right. If not, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, stay safe, everyone, and have a great day.